Hello, this is Tom Pizzitti with Trading in the Mark, and for this week, excuse me, I think it probably makes sense to look at the Dow. I want to look at the Dow uh, because I think it has the clearest pattern of the uh, U.S. indices at this point in time, so let's dive in. On the weekly chart, what we see here, bring out the laser pointer, that uh, the pattern that I'm, I have right here is used to be the alternate, um, and I promoted it to primary, um, you know, really this last week, but uh, you could make the case that it should have been done a little bit earlier. But uh, the pattern that I'm working with here is the one of a, a three, three, five for a... Uh, bracket B wave, and this fits uh, real well. I mean, in that the I had a high, very high likelihood that the high back in late July was a corrective wave of some type, whether it was a major corrective wave, and that it is the lower high to this high that will start a uh, impulse and a cascade eventually down to probably test and exceed this low back here or if it was just as it turned out that this was only a uh, a five wave move to complete uh, a b wave that completes this corrective move uh, that we've kind of been in in pretty much for a year this sideways really kind of sideways move here and that is the uh, last uh, last part of that form so that we have an impulse up, a big glue wave sideways, and then uh, move up out of that uh, for the C um, of bracket B. In any case, that's what's turned out to happen. These targets here are based off of measuring um, from this low uh, up to this high, and then up off of either this uh, low of the whole correction or the low of the end of the correction. We kind of get these numbers uh, up here. We're already into um, the top part of, the, excuse me, we're into the initial part of those uh, targets right now. So whether we go and push up to um, new, you know, overhead targets that might even make a new high over the old, you know, make a new all time high. It could happen. Um, not my primary idea right now. Uh, think that it's more likely that we end up with a lower high to this high. But as I noted here, uh, B waves can do make price new price extremes, and that wouldn't invalidate the pattern. So this pattern, you know, if the Dow were to uh, take a launch up after the FOMC meeting on some kind of you know, maybe ultra dovish news or something. I don't know. Um, it, it, it would be fine. Um, again, not my ideal scenario, but if it happens, um, that's fine. Uh, we could live with it. It wouldn't change my forecast for a, you know, a sharp decline, pretty much a tough year in 2024. Um, and that might lead into 2025. And that's too early to tell, but certainly 2024, um, looks to me to uh, uh, be kind of a, a tough go and probably be a, you know, some type part of that. It might start off slow, but in some part of the year that we would get some kind of um, sharp acceleration to the downside. So it's getting out ahead. Let's talk about the daily chart. So looking at the daily chart, and we had this five wave decline into the uh, October low. We expect some kind of move up off of that. Again, initially was looking, expecting a um, a corrective move up to, for a lower high. But as we started getting this strong gapping behavior, you know, the market gapping up and, um, you know, being very persistent, it started to act definitely wasn't acting like a correction it was acting more like an impulse wave so we're looking for, so that would mean that we need five waves up off of this low 
the problem is is that this has been pretty tough to count um uh, i i definitely will take a swing at it uh, on the next chart but just uh forewarning that i'm not not rock solid where we are you know certain where we are in um the five wave sequence at this point in time don't know if we're making the maybe a new high will complete the whole move up or if a new high is only sort of a third wave that there would be a nine another choppy corrective move and then another high past that uh this momentum um this is the adaptive cci and this kind of curve uh is more typical of a third wave um instead of a instead of a fifth wave but you know there are exceptions and i don't typically like to use uh a lean on an indicator for the pattern but just to just to say that this type of where we get a new momentum high uh on a high that's usually a wave three but you know we'll see what happens um as to cycles yes you know we're kind of a couple days past this already right now but um you know overshooting it by a couple days is is valid i don't really see that as too big of a problem so we could have a cycle inflection here that is meaningful and then obviously um next week in this case it's the, the day after the fomc meeting but we all know that the, right around the fomc meeting either the day of or the day after is going to be an important period so you know we're kind of a you could even argue and i do on the last slide that we just may be in a holding pattern until next week but moving on so i said that i would take a uh, take a swing at counting this and i have and that uh, back in the early part maybe kind of a one two um a three a four this certainly is the only thing that looks like a, uh, <laughs> a substantive correction um uh, in the move so far so maybe uh one two three four and then an extended fifth and that might that it, that we have an extended fifth could explain why the momentum curve looks the way that it does on the daily chart so again not certain you know we could be topping out in here um in the next either few days or in the next week but uh i i guess i have to say that there's a mild bullish bias um while above 359.80 to test either uh 363.75 or 365.20 in the dow and then short-term inflections um fall uh, kind of the middle of the day uh, on thursday so kind of a, that's the that would be a rise up into the nfp kind of trade would certainly be keep can be taking place and you know not a bad hypothesis um for you know kind of a bias up for the next couple days and then the other one um is um up into just before the nfp uh excuse me up into just before the fomc as we see the uh, late pm high on the 12th that's the day before the fomc so that's kind of it i like i said this is i think the the clearest pattern but i did promise to look at the s and p's and so this is the same time frame on the s and p's and here we have this sideways move that's really taken over a week at this point um yes there's been you know kind of a pokes to pokes to uh into uh target levels and it falls back and kind of pokes up into it again and you know falls back and, you know of the we had a, a new high not a new high a high uh the so far is underneath the july high which is at 4607 that high is still uh, holding for now so at this point in time we have a lower high just by a bit and um this week we've uh, had the market kind of pull away from that and again just chop sideways and that choppy behavior we may just see more of that for the next you know several days into next week 
in that no one really wants to make any kind of move uh, ahead of the FOMC. I'm sure that somebody will um, probably try to, that there will be some volatility um, on the NFP, but, uh, you know, be, 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 uh, be forewarned that it's probably going to be difficult to knock it very far out of the range until next week. So I'm really kind of thinking that it's probably best to expect kind of a mild bullish bias, but don't get too hung up on it. Um, and, um, you know, kind of let things settle, uh, in the next, into next week. And then after next week, there'll probably be a, you know, a good bit of flurry up or down, um, for a week or so before everybody starts to think about going on Christmas vacation. So that will be it for this week. Um, hope you've all having a great week and until next time, that'll be it for now.